Hello, and welcome to episode number 10 of my Python game engine development project. It's been quite a long time since the last episode. I believe the last one was in um, March of this year. I did work on the engine some in May, but I took most of the summer off and have just resumed work in October and continued into November. Um, speaking of which, October 15th was the one year anniversary of this project, but it's kind of weird to talk about it being one year because it probably represents only two to three months of actual work. Um, Hopefully you can tell from the appearance that things are a bit more polished now. I've made new artwork for the buttons and the windows, as well as a new background image, and I've chosen a pack of cursors, uh, the Comix cursors, C-O-M-I-X. It's a free Unix cursor pack. Um, and the reason I needed a new pack of cursors is because I've added a new uh, feature called cursor modes that I'll talk about in just a moment. Um, in addition to the visual changes, I've also rewritten pretty much every component of the engine. Um, it's not a rewrite from scratch, but everything has been made more efficient, more organized, more readable. Uh, so that's that's quite nice. Um, all right, onto the cursor modes. Um, basically, the way this works is the engine keeps track of which GUI control the mouse is currently positioned over, and then when it goes to draw the cursor, it asks that control which cursor mode should be used. So you'll see as I move the cursor over the button, it will change from the arrow to the pointer. And that works very well. And you'll notice the button becomes highlighted as well, and then I can click to depress it. So you can see what that looks like. Uh, speaking of button styles, um, I've added pretty much complete customization ability to the buttons. So depending on whether it's normal, highlighted, or depressed, um, you can have completely different fonts, font styles, colors, images, text, um, you know, everything. Um, so the buttons are almost completely customizable. Um, so, you know, when the button is, you know, in its normal mode, you could have it say normal. When it's highlighted, you could have it say highlighted. So you can even change the text per mode. It's really, really nice. Um, in addition to the buttons, the cursor modes are supported in every other type of GUI control. Uh, the cursor mode defaults to the normal arrow, but on the case of the window, you'll see that it changes to the hand, indicating that you can drag the window from that position. And when you click to drag, it changes to the fist. And you'll see the dragging works very well. Uh, in previous versions of the engine, there has been some glitchiness uh, with the uh, mouse movements as you get towards the edges of the screen, but I'm very happy to announce that I've squashed all of that, and so now it's very, very smooth. Works very, very nicely. Um, I have to apologize that the buttons here on the window are blank. I've recently completely redone the way the buttons work um, that for minimizing, maximizing, closing the windows, and I just haven't gotten around to doing the images for the symbols. Um, but the buttons themselves do work. You'll see I can click this to minimize, and that's how it looks. Um, you can maximize as well, and then close. Um, closing works a little bit differently now. Um, in previous versions, closing was actually a destructive process, meaning it destroyed the window and it was no longer usable. Now what it does is it just sets the parent of the window to none, meaning you know nothing contains the window and the window will no longer be displayed. I've set up this push button here to push the window back onto the stack by setting its parent as the main menu GUI. And you'll see that the window reappears. Um, you may have noticed that when I clicked the window, it changed from the light blue color to this dark blue color. And that's just a visual distinction I've added uh, for active slash foreground windows versus inactive slash background windows. So you see I can click back and forth, and that works very well. And that's basically just to make the windows less distracting when they're in the background. Now something else that you can do for the windows, uh, a new feature, is being able to uh, turn these buttons and their functions off and on. So if you don't want to allow a user to minimize a window, you can set its minimizable property to false, which is what this button does. And you'll see the minimize button goes away, and you can no longer minimize the window. Uh, maximizable does the same thing. The maximize button goes away. You can no longer maximize the window, and you can even turn off closing. So that works very well. Um, uh, you can do the same thing for dragging. So if you click that, you can no longer drag the window. And then resizing. 
uh, resizing is a new feature for the uh, engine. So you see that as I move the mouse over the edges of the window, the cursor mode will change to this uh, resizing arrows. And it can be um, vertical, horizontal, or even diagonal. And you may be wondering what these colored squares represent. Another feature I've added to the engine uh, is the support for horizontal and vertical alignment and sizing. And that just means that as you resize uh, the window, the controls inside it uh, can respond differently in terms of their position and their size. So you'll see that all these windows will remain um, positioned with this same 10 pixel uh, border around the edge, no matter how uh, large or small the window gets. And they also change their size. So both their sizing and positioning is relative to the sizing and positioning, uh, I'm sorry, the sizing of their uh, the window that they are in. And so the red square is uh, relative to the top and the left. The pink square is relative to the right and the bottom. So you can, uh, you know, that's highly customizable, and it makes for a lot, a um, lot better GUI support, especially in terms of supporting different resolutions. So if you know you want you know, window A at the top left, window B at the bottom right, no matter how large the resolution the user is running, you know, this horizontal vertical alignment sizing feature will let you do that. Uh, one thing I had to add to support the resizing uh, feature, um, which is available in all GUI controls and not just the windows, is the concept of minimum sizes. So you'll see that, let me turn these uh, buttons back on, you'll see that I've made it so that you cannot resize it to the point where these buttons get cut off. So its minimum size is, is about 100 by 100. Um, the default uh, minimum size I think is 8 by 8, but you can set it to whatever you want uh, per, uh, per GUI control type. Um, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is console logging. In addition to having the dedicated console window that appears whenever you launch the engine, it now logs the output of the console to a file as well, console.log. So it's there for debugging purposes, especially you know if the engine were to crash, everything up until that point from the console will be logged in that file for your records. Um, so that works very well. Um, I think that covers everything that I wanted to talk about. Uh, there are a couple more GUI controls that I want to make. Uh, before getting into the uh, 2D physics, uh, the main thing that I want to do is the in-game console that will show the console output and allow you to run you know, various commands from within the game. Um, so once I get that done, I'll probably be moving into the 2D physics uh, pretty quickly. I'm using the Chipmunk library, which is a C library, but I'm using the PyMonk wrapper. It's a wrapper for that library written in Python. So hopefully you'll be able to see some of the way that works in the next video. Um, I think that's all that I wanted to cover. I guess I will catch you guys next time. Thanks.